and help you pick the right stock at the right time. Good morning. Well, it's the last trading day of the year. In fact, the last day of the year. So thanks you so much for joining us on Daybreak. This is Bloomberg Quintin. I'm Alex Matthew. First, let me take you through the headlines this morning. The Asian markets are likely to see thin trading on the last day of the year. Markets in Japan and China are shut and there will be shortened trading sessions elsewhere. U.S. President Donald Trump says the U.S. has made big progress in trade talks with China. Trump and Xi Jinping spoke at length over the phone on Saturday. The Reserve Bank of India says that the new bankruptcy law has led to an improvement in recoveries of loans and resolutions of stressed assets in the financial year ending March 2018. The government will infuse capital worth nearly 10,200 crore rupees into Bank of India by a preferential allotment. And a strong currency and a slide in oil prices led to foreign inflows worth 5,400 crore rupees into the Indian markets last week. Let's talk about the U.S. trading session just to set the context going into trade today. U.S. stocks wavered between small gains and losses on Friday, struggling to maintain the momentum from a two-day winning streak following a week of volatile trading. Taylor Riggs of Bloomberg News wraps up all the action on Wall Street in this report. Let's take a look at where the U.S. markets closed on Friday. Volatile, wild day, constantly fluctuating between gains and losses, pretty much what we've been seeing all week. We did end up in the red today. The Dow was off about 76 points or three tenths of one percent. The S&P 500 did a little bit better. It was off just more than one tenth of one percent. And really interesting here is the Nasdaq managing to post a small gain, but they are in the green. So the Nasdaq and the tech and some of the more risky stocks sort of outperforming on Friday. And that is certainly something that is giving market participants a little bit of confidence, despite some of the headline numbers that were, were in the red. I want to look at some of the individual sectors within the S&P 500 because this is where it gets really interesting. The riskier sectors within the S&P 500 were outperforming. They were some of the gainers, even though the headline number on the major index fell. And that is something that market participants were really looking for to see if they could get confirmation of this rally. So the best performer today on the sector level was the consumer discretionary. That was up about three tenths of 1%, real estate up about two tenths of 1%, and healthcare and financials, which are typically some of the more risky sectors, also managing to eke out some small gains. So that is definitely something that's a more encouraging sign here as the market looks to settle down a little bit from the volatility. Now, speaking of volatility, we can't sit here without talking about the VIX because we did see the VIX uh, come down a little bit to a 28. Now, typically earlier this morning, it had gone up about that 30 level. And that is a key level because when it had breached the 30 level back in February, that was originally when the markets had bottomed out for the year. So as we came up above 30, 35, in the past few days, seeing it come back down today to a post of, uh, about a 28 handle is definitely something, again, that's giving market participants a little bit of calm as that VIX or that fear gauge index comes off the highs. I want to wrap up with looking at the 10 year yield because we did see a little bit of a bid in some of these safe haven assets like bonds. Of course, on the 10 year, we are down now about four basis points to a 271. And that is really key because most market participants had assumed that a 280 was the key support level, 275 was another key support level. So breaching that lower and heading back down to a 271 is a little bit uh, of a, definitely seeing a bid to some of these safe haven assets and a little bit lower than I think uh, some of the technical support levels had initially thought. But the good news, if there is any, is that the yield curve does continue to steepen. We were a little bit higher in both the 2s, 10s, and the 2s, 30. As we know, typically when the yield curve flattens or, of course, inverts, that's usually a signal of a slowdown or a recession. So seeing that yield curve steepen a little bit is, again, another good sign as we sort of wade our way through the volatility and as we wrap up 2018. That is a check on your U.S. markets. All right. Well, big news coming in over the weekend on the global trade front. U.S. President Donald Trump has reported big progress. That's what he says 
in a trade talks with his Chinese counterpart Xi Jinping, providing a hopeful start to what could be a make or break year uh, for ties between the world's two largest economies. Now, Ross Kranzi uh, of uh, Bloomberg News has more details in this report. We do know from President Trump that it was a long call and that he was pretty effusive about it. Um, it's not the first time he's tweeted about uh, talks with China going well uh, since he had that very closely watched uh, dinner meeting with President Xi in Buenos Aires a month ago on December 7. He said talks were going very well. And a week later, he said China wants a big and very comprehensive deal. So what he said yesterday was uh, really quite similar to that. He said comprehensive again, covering all subjects, areas and points of dispute. Uh, some people may feel that, uh, that President Trump is getting out over his skis a little bit and being a bit more enthusiastic about mm. uh, the trade talks with China than uh, may actually be the case. But it does come as it comes just a week before a, a, a delegation from the U.S. is scheduled to go to Beijing to uh, to continue those talks. They've been going on all month, as we understand, uh, by phone and other methods, uh, and this will be the first time the two sides meet face to face. So uh, it does certainly seem that in the final days of uh, 2018, the, the brinkmanship between the U.S. and China may be uh, dissipating a little bit, um, and uh, each side has kind of given some ground, it seems, in terms of, in terms of concessions that could lead to that broader comprehensive trade deal. Speaking about those concessions, Beijing announced a third round of tariff cuts last week, saying it would lower import taxes on more than 700 goods from the 1st of January as part of its efforts to open up the economy and lower costs for domestic consumers. Stephen Engel of Bloomberg News has more details in this report. The United States and Donald Trump at the White House, uh, they want very ambitious reforms coming from the Chinese uh, that necessarily cannot be, uh, you know, provided in the short term, uh, such as, the, you know, intellectual property theft. However, we are hearing uh, that perhaps the Chinese are looking to revamp their patent law, for one, and also give more teeth to their intellectual property rights uh, legislation and laws uh, to give uh, claimants, uh, you know, a, a more compensation. If if their IPR have been violated. Uh, but again, the Chinese, according to uh, Xinhua News Agency and Xi Jinping, uh, wants to see stable progress. They don't want to see these fits and starts, like what we saw in May when Liu He, uh, you know, the right-hand man on economic affairs to Xi Jinping, went to Washington, thought he had pretty much a deal with Steve Mnuchin. However, that was kiboshed a day or two later by Donald Trump. Uh, so they are definitely more cautious on this. However, uh, they are saying that uh, they like to see, you know, the United States and China meet halfway on some of the pledges that she and Trump uh, agreed upon in their meeting in uh, Argentina. We've also heard that, uh, you know, starting tomorrow, uh, China will have its third round of tariff cuts, this on some 700 goods. Uh, but again, the proof will be in the pudding and the, the White House is, is getting a bit pledge fatigue from the Chinese. So again, yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit of a pessimist on this until some sort of real progress happens. On that note, let's go straight to Rosalind Chin of Bloomberg News, who's joining us live from the Hong Kong studio. Well, seemingly uh, light trading action today in Asia, a lot of markets shut. Rosalind, what are you picking up? Definitely a lot of market shots uh, here in this region. But let's take a look at some of the ones which are open. Hong Kong is one of those. And right now, that is trading higher, up by 0.7%. Some of that, of course, may be a boost in sentiment from, as you have been reporting, uh, some progress which has been seen being made on those trade talks uh, between US and China. Of course, the positivity uh, in investor sentiment uh, will help to uh, lead the markets higher in a very thin trading session right now. Because a lot of the markets, as you mentioned, are closed, including Japan, uh, South Korea as well. Um, among the other one's open we've got uh, um, Singapore that is uh, making gains right now as well up by 0.4 percent and in Australia the S&P SX 200 also up by about uh, just over half of one percent now trade of course has been one of the biggest uh, clouds hanging over uh, both the markets and the economic outlook for a lot of this year especially the second half of the year so this these uh, moves towards uh, improving trade ties should help the markets as well still remaining though of course are uncertainties over the US shutdown the government shutdown and of course Brexit and some of the government issues in Europe as well so these issues are, are causing a lot of uncertainty among investors going into 2019 uh, in China though um, we've had uh, some people 
PMI data showing that for December, not only was the number missed, it actually contracted for the first time since 2016. Not such great news for the economy there, but perhaps with trade talks moving forwards, this may give uh, a bit more of a lift to the economic data going forward into the new year. One uh, stock I want to point out, Tencent, that is gaining about uh, three quarters of one percent right now. Uh, this is because partly uh, the Chinese government lifted a nine month freeze on new mobile uh, new video game titles. Tencent wasn't among the ones that it approved um, the release of, but uh, of course Tencent in the long term is likely to uh, also gain from this uh, once the dust, dust settles. So Tencent there making gains of about three quarters of one percent. Tencent of course being one of the biggest components on the HSI, the Hang Seng Index in Hong Kong. Back to you. Thanks so much for that, Roslyn, and here's wishing you uh, a happy new year from all of us here. Well, let's move on and talk uh, about the trade setup for the day in India. Agam Wakil is joining me to tell you all about that and also to tell you what's happening in the futures and options space. Agam, well, those are the updates, limited updates, uh, so to speak, from the international markets. Uh, how are we looking on the last trading day of the, of the year? Well, Alex, you know, whenever there is very little participation from the globe, uh, at least in the last five weeks, uh, it's been observed that Indian markets are, tend to do well. And that is uh, reflected in the SGX Nifty, which is higher by as much as uh, 45 odd points. And well, once again, we are going to have to wait and watch whether or not we actually see the Nifty well move above the mark of 11,000 in the near term over the next few days. But uh, when it comes to uh, how we saw trade ban out last Friday, again, a lot of strength coming back. And both the mid cap and the small cap indices not only moving in tandem, but perhaps outperforming the benchmark indices by a notch. Nifty and the uh, Nifty PSU banking index also advancing in trade. And among others, uh, we are also keeping an eye on something like your ADRs. So we have Tata Motors, ICICI Bank, Vedanta, all advancing in trade. Uh, on the other hand, uh, among the other ADRs, we have perhaps this marginal weakness in Infosys. But uh, let's take a look at your foreign institutional flows. And there is a little bit of selling from the FIS standpoint. However, DIs have bought in around 1,200 crores worth uh, on a net basis when it comes to Indian equity markets. Contributor-wise, where it was the HDFC Twins, which led the gains, followed by ICICI Bank and Reliance Industries, but gains were across. So uh, we did, it certainly was a very strong day of trade for the Nifty. Coming down to the futures and options space, what we're keeping an eye on is uh, whether or not there is accumulation. And of course, these are early days for the new series, so we are going to see an increase in open interest number for the January futures. Similarly, for the Nifty banking futures, that's where the number is a lot more pronounced at around 24% when it comes to his OI. But uh, taking a look at how open interest distribution stacks up right now, uh, not much has changed except for the fact that your higher end of the range has shifted from 11,000 to 11,200 based on your call concentration. But when it comes to changes in open interest on uh, well, last Friday, what we saw was a little more writing around the 11,200 call, as you can see there, and more writing around the 10,800 put. That perhaps could serve as a near-term well, zone within which you can expect the Nifty to move within. Now, Dani Power remains in the FNO band. And uh, moving on, among uh, other variables, we have uh, a, a decline of around 5% in the WIX. And also, the Nifty put call ratio remains largely unchanged, despite the fact that we still see a lot of strength in the, in the Nifty and the bank Nifty put call ratio at right 1.11. But uh, moving on, uh, we're also keeping an eye on Ramco Cements, and that's the one that stands out. But even the likes of Siemens, which did advance by around 1%, did see a lot of accumulation. There won't be too much with respect to those stocks, which saw unwinding, if we can have that plate up there. Uh, but uh, there was something like a South Indian bank, India Cement, and Seat, which all stood out. In, and in fact, they also saw about a short covering coming through. So a whole lot of stocks out there to watch out for, and of course, the benchmark indices. But we're expecting volumes to remain thin today, Alex. Absolutely. Thanks so much for that, Agam. Well, and let's talk about the currency markets as well. The rupee jumped 40 paise on Friday to finish at an over one week high of 69.95 against the US currency on strong dollar buying by banks and exporters amid the greenback's weakness overseas. The US dollar was trading lower against global currencies due to market volatility, uncertainties relating 
to U.S. government shutdown, weak global growth prospects and U.S.-China trade tensions. That could, of course, change uh, this week. Several updates already in. The leaders, as we told you, of uh, the U.S. and China indicating progress in trade talks. Uh, but also at the same time, on the other end of the spectrum, the PMI data that just came in this morning uh, in China indicating a downtick. Of course, uh, if we're talking about the corporate bond market uh, in India, uh, that indicated uh, uh, that yields fell about five basis points amid low participation, uh, mir mirroring similar movement in the government bond market. Let's talk about updates in the banking space now. The Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code has apparently helped improve recovery and led to faster resolution according to the data revised by uh, the Reserve Bank of India, the banking regulator trend and progress uh, of in banking report ranks Safezi Act and IBC Root as the two most effective tools used by bankers. Vishwanath Nayar, uh, who has read this report and has already reported on it, uh, is joining us for all the details there. Uh, Vishi, what are the cliff notes and what really are you taking from this report? Good morning, Alex. So the idea that uh, the RBI trying to trade this report is that during the year financial year 2017-18, uh, banks have seen an improvement in recovery. Now, why did they see an improvement in recovery? Remember that the last three or four years, uh, banks have been struggling with growing NPA problems. And there wasn't ever a sort of a, a pathway where lenders would go out and recover this money. It, late in 2016, early 2017, uh, the IBC got introduced. And then later in June 2017, the RBI pushed banks to use the IBC. So, uh, because of that, uh, the IBC has become one of the bigger tools uh, for recovery. Uh, and there was some change uh, within the SARFACES uh, provisions, which also helped banks recover better. But apart from all of this, the RBI points out that in the report, uh, in the report they point out that the banks also have been able to recover through their own means, through internal uh, recovery mechanisms, uh, which have improved considerably over 2017 and 18. Now, recovery aside, the RBI warns that uh, banks currently do not have the uh, wherewithal or do, do not have the right amount of provisioning to cover for any losses. And therefore, the RBI believes that tougher capital norms are necessary because in the future, if there are high losses, then these, this capital is what will protect the banks uh, from becoming insolvent. Uh, apart from this, the RBI also said uh, that for the NBFE sector, it is uh, currently planning uh, to review the ALM uh, guidelines the asset liability and will come up with tougher guidelines uh, in the future. So these are some of the highlights uh, of the report, Alex. Uh, there will be there will be some uh, more minor details, but of course you can read that on uh, Bloomberg.com. Absolutely. I was just going to say that. Thanks so much for that, Vishy. Uh, I was going to say that. You can read all the details on the website, BloombergQuint.com. There's a story that has been put up there. Uh, let's shift focus now uh, to commodities. Uh, Yashu Padhya is joining in with all the updates there. Morning, Yash. What are you picking up? Morning, Alex. So crude oil prices, they continue to gain on Monday, uh, with Brent ending the day more than 2% higher as U.S. President Donald Trump reported progress in trade talks with his Chinese counterpart. Additionally, crude oil prices, they saw further support coming in after the government data released last week showed a 46,000 barrel drop in U.S. crude inventories. Now, the decline, while modest, uh, is viewed positively following the American Petroleum Institute's report reported 6.9 million barrel increase in crude buildup on Thursday. Uh, ba ba on the base metals, space, we are getting some mi mixed cues. Aluminum prices, they fell for a fifth consecutive day, while zinc uh, fell the most in nearly a month. Lead prices, they posted their highest weekly gain since August, up almost 5% in that period, while tin and uh, copper prices, they ended the day in the green. Uh, gold prices, they continue to power through gains, extending their run of rally for a fourth consecutive day, uh, taking the gold uh, spot gold prices to a fresh six-month high as investors continue to plow cash into defensive, sec defensive assets amid surging equity volatility. All right, thanks so much for that, Yash. Well, today is likely to be a, a thin trading day with regard to equities, but, uh, well, Nikki Murchanani is here to tell you what stocks are likely to be in focus on account of them being in the news. Morning, Nikki. What's on your list today? Hi, Alex. I'm going to start off with Marico, where the MSP for Copra prices have been increased to more than rupees 2,000 per quintal uh, for 2019 season. And the MSP for Copra is now increased from 7,511 per quintal to 9,521. Uh, separately, we're looking at Infibeam Avenues, which has terminated uh, the proposed acquisition of the entire stake in Unicommerce, given that uh, the contract was terminated because the contract's uh, pr proceedings or the conditions weren't fulfilled within 
the stipulated time. Also, we are separately looking at Asian Granito, where the promoter and the MD has been arrested by the Directorate of Revenue Intelligence with regards to the case related to an amount which is worth then four, four odd crore. But then the promoter and the MD right now is on bail. This is a BSE clarification, uh, sorry, a notification that has come out. Also, we're looking at Kirila Healthcare, which has gotten a final approval from US FDA to sell an anti acne medication. The drug will be made in Ahmedabad facility. And also, we're looking at NLC. India, where it has completed the project well before the time. It has commissioned 1000 megawatt of thermal power project, which was actually supposed to be completed in the span of six months and now has been completed in four months. So we are looking at an early projection of revenues coming in from these streams. Oriental Bank of Commerce, where Government of India would be investing in 5,500 crore, and Bank of India, where Government of India has decided to infuse around 10,086 crore via equity in the bank. Back to you. All right, thanks so much for that, Nikki. Well, Somit Sarkar is joining me now to tell you all about the big brokerage calls of the day. Morning, Somit. Uh, what are you picking up? Good morning, Alex. On the big brokerage calls for the day, first we have is UBS on JSW Energy. Now, the brokerage has maintained its sell rating on the stock with a target price of around 68 for JSW Energy. Now, according to the brokerage, the spot power rates have cooled down after spiking to an average of around 5.9 rupees per kilowatt in October 2018. Now, in the month of December, the spot rates have declined and on an average, they have been close to 3.3 rupees per kilowatt. Now, this fall in power spot rates amid higher fuel cost have again brought focus on JSW JSW Energy's unutilized capacities. So that stock will be in focus because of this. Lastly, despite the stock underperforming broader market, the brokerage still believes that the market is still not pricing in the medium term volume and realization risk that comes in with JSW Energy. The second uh, stock is on NCC where Philip Capital have maintained their buy rating on the stock with a target price of around 145. Now, according to the brokerage, in the, the first half of financial year 2019, earnings of NCC represent the strong fundamentals of the company and have reinforced the brokerage conviction on the superior execution capabilities of the company going forward. Now, year to date, NCC has seen strong order inflow and uh, strong order inflow and has a strong order book despite a slowdown in road and metro segments. Now, over the last 10 months, the stock has corrected significantly on the back of macro concerns which are largely related to elections and this fall has given a right time to an investor to buy the stock which has an immense growth potential, says the brokerage. All right, thanks so much for that, Shamit. Well, there are several stories that you can find on the website, BloombergQuinn.com. You should check them out. Here are just a few of them. Let's start, in fact, uh, with uh, news on petrol and diesel prices. A visit to the fuel station today will likely be lighter on your pocket. On Sunday, prices of petrol were cut by 22 pesos per litre to their lowest level in 2018, while diesel rates were reduced by 23 pesos to a nine-month low. Uh, in the capital, petrol now stands at just over 69 rupees, while diesel is at 63.3 rupees a litre. The main reason for this, as you probably know, is the fall in global crude oil prices. Uh, they've fallen, fallen to about $50 a, a barrel for Brent crude from close to $85 a barrel just a couple of months back. On to other regulatory news. The Securities and Exchange Board of India is planning to beef up its market surveillance system as well as its tool for speedy analysis of trade data, which identifies possible violations such as insider trading, share price manipulation and front running. To this end, it has invited applications from interested companies to provide information technology services for the maintenance of its integrated market surveillance system, data warehousing and business intelligence system. There's also an update on Air India. Uh, the government plans to rope in professionals for top positions at the national carrier through a global search process as part of its efforts to revive the airline. That's according to Civil Aviation Minister Suresh Prabhu. Now, historically, low coffee prices in 2018 could uh, end up making your morning brew more expensive in 2019. Take a look.
Well, that's all we have for you in this edition of Daybreak from all of us here at Bloomberg Quint working on this program. Here's wishing you a happy new year in advance. Do enjoy, but enjoy responsibly. This is Bloomberg Quint 